Well, Yaquil, I am so excited to be where we are standing right now. We're on the mountains of Israel in Samaria, the biblical heartland. What is this structure right behind us? It's unbelievable. This is the altar of Joshua Binun. Here they gathered together all the tribes, the 12 tribes of Israel. Six stand on this mountain, on Grizzly Mountain. The other six stood here. And, and this is Mount Ebal. This is Mount Ebal. From the Bible. From the Bible. Grizim and Ebal. And here stood the first time of the tabernacle. They put it here. The Ark of, Coven of the Covenant also stood here. And the holy priest used to sacrifice the animals that they are allowed and pure to eat on this structure. This altar, Yaquil, 3,300 years old, by the way, Joshua's altar, Joshua ben Nun, son of Nun, uh, as you said. Not only was the altar here with the sacrifices, this is sacred ground we're standing on, the Ark of the Covenant and the Tabernacle, and probably a million Israelites standing all around. Yes, they used to do the ceremony that Moses commanded them just a few years before. They will cross the, the Jordan River. You will go just ahead straight to this mountain and on Ebal Mountain, you will build the altar. You will sacrifice the, the animals as I command you. And you will, you will take the, the, the stones, that they are onion stones. It's not allowed that an iron tool will touch on them. The Bible says that, right? God commands, commands the people of Israel. These must be unhewn stones. No, no iron tools were used on them. And hey, they look pretty unhewn to me. Yes, they are natural stones. Yes, they just pick them up from the, all these mountains and they build it together. I don't know, maybe a thousand people, maybe more than a thousand people just walk together and build this amazing altar. And after this, you know, it was a sacred moment of the people. It was one of the sacred uh, sites. And they used to use this uh, altar even more than a hundred years. God gives a command to build this altar. For the people at home who might not understand the, the, the animal sacrifices of the Old Testament, uh, explain why God commanded them, commanded Joshua, to build this altar as on Mount Ebal, as is described in the book of Deuteronomy and the book of Joshua. They have a command in Deuteronomy and also in Joshua, a verses that explain them how to build this altar. And it say to them, you can't uh, take an iron tool and uh, touch the, the stones. They need to be onion stones. This is the first command. The other command that they got from God. From God. <laughs> it's coming from the top. It's coming from the top. You can't use iron tools. Why? Because the iron tools give you a death. And the altar will bring the life for all the humanity, not only for the Israelites, for all the humanity. Israel is a light unto the nations. Yes, definitely. This is the, the purpose of the altar. And when you are coming and sacrifice, you can't go on steps when you go and sacrifice for me, you need to have a ramp. And here, as we saw, you have a two ramps. And these ramps, the priest used to go on the ramp and to climb to the top of the altar here, just here. And in that room, so we have four rooms inside. They butch the animal, even it was a sheep, cattle or a goat. If we go back to this altar and about the findings that we find here or Adam Zartal found here. Yeah, tell us about that. Tell us how it was found and how he kind of uncovered it and how they came to the conclusion that it's here. That this was Joshua's altar. It was a survey. After the, the war of 67, uh, Israel uh, understand that there is opportunity to find our ways, yes, to find these uh, ancient sites of the Israelites in the Samaria and in Judea. So uh, the government uh, make a survey, ask for a survey, and they uh, took archaeologists. And one of the archaeologists was Adam Zertal, that he was a cripple, yes, in his legs, okay. yes, he could, couldn't 
tent on his legs. And this is a mountainous, rugged terrain up here. We can't go from there to here. It was a You and I could barely walk with two good legs. And you remember how it was, how was difficult to yes, climb to here. So he was a guy that he, did, he couldn't go on his legs. And he came, you know, uh, step by step. He crawled? He crawled, yes. He literally crawled. Yes, yes. Wow. He came step by step here and he found this area that it was till the the height of this sketch to the height okay the, height the sketch i sketch. see it kind of looks like black paint or kind of marker almost uh along the rocks that's what you're referring to yes yes it was uh, covered by mud and by the stones why because when the ancient israelites when they left this site and went to shiloh so they didn't want that somebody will loot this altar or somebody will sacrifice again on it because the, sacrifice, the sacred went to Shiloh. Yes. They didn't want uh, two uh, uh, different uh, uh, sacred places. It's interesting, Akil. So the centers of worship for the Jewish people, uh, the Israelites crossed the Jordan into the land. This is kind of the first sacred place where, look, the tabernacle's there, the Ark of the Covenant, uh, the sacrifices are here, then it moves to Shiloh, and then we eventually move to Jerusalem. Yes. Which is now the holiest site for the Jewish people. Also, the eternal flame was here. It was the, they sacrificed two things, animals and a flame. You mentioned that eternal flame, Yaquil. Hey, it, it's windy up here, it's chilly. Our cameras are shaking, the audio is rough because of the wind, but hey, the flames still burn because God was in it. It's a miracle. It's a miracle of God. And it sounds like the discovery of Joshua's altar was a miracle. Tell us more. Okay, uh, he's crawling up here. So they came here and they started to dig and they saw this uh, structure and it's not tall as it's now. And they didn't understand what is a fortress? What is it? And you could see it. It actually kind of looks like a fortress. You could see it being a lookout or something. The enemy's coming. But what is the, the problem to understand, the difficulties to understand it is a fortress? There is no way to yeah. enter inside. The, as you said, Yakil, there's literally no way in other than those ramps. Yes, even only when you see the ramps, you understand that this is a, some structure yeah. that you need to climb on it and you need to worship on it. So they came here and they found bones of cattle, sheep, and goats. So what is, there is no difference between them. Why? Because all of them are a pure animal. That's biblical. It's biblical. You can't sacrifice camel. You can't sacrifice horse, no donkey. So definitely this site is a Israelite ancient site. And this altar is Israelite. All the pottery shards that they found here, and there are thousands of yeah. pottery shards, was from the period of 1,300 before C, BC. BC, that's the period of Joshua. That's exactly the period, exactly the time frame. And by the way, we needed a military escort to come up here, Yaquil. Uh, this is, not many people come here. This is a very isolated area. Uh, why is that? Why did we need a military escort to come, who graciously brought us up, very thankful to the IDF? Um, such a special site, such a pivotal site, in the history of the Jewish people, in the history of the Bible, why aren't more people coming here? The site that we are uh, standing on, it's on the uh, B zone. B zone, it means that the Palestinians are controlled in this area. So this is a Palestinian controlled area. Yes, yes. So when we are coming here, even if it's with a, a, a military uh, escort, yeah. we are putting our, uh, our legs in this area and we say, listen, we won't leave our ancestors' land. Yeah, you're walking in the footsteps of your ancestors. And this is one of the commands that God bring to Abraham. He told to Abraham, if you want to have this land, you need to go from the north to the south, from the east to the west, from every, every place that you will stand on it, it will be yours. Every Bible believer, I think, needs to see this site up close. It's amazing. Yaquil, thanks for showing us the way today at Joshua's Altar, an amazing place. Thank you, my Thank friend. Thank you very much. We appreciate it, Yaquil. Folks, what an experience it was to visit Joshua's Altar. Wow. Now, after the break, we're going to stay in Samaria to hear some of the great things that are happening today.
in Israel's biblical heartland. Don't move.